All right, so I wanted to do a few videos on uh, the Hantec scope. Uh, this is the A-channel Hantec 1008C uh, scope. It's automotive based. And there's not a whole lot of information uh, on there, on the web, about uh, setting this scope up and using it. There's a few videos here and there, a few guys are doing things with it. But overall, it's mostly Pico scope, or, uh, you know, a lot of guys use a Veris Pro, and then they use... Uh, the scope on that Vantage, the Vantage Pro, uh, they have little mini scopes. There's a lot of handheld scopes out there by AES Wave and stuff. Uh, the reason why I chose this scope to start messing with it, as far as uh, uh, doing something uh, a little bit bigger than just a one or two channel scope, is because it has eight channels. It's relatively, it's real affordable compared to most scopes, um, and it. It, uh, uh, you know, when you're getting into something and learning something, you don't need, you don't necessarily have to go out and spend three thousand dollars for a scope. Pico scope, Pico scopes are real nice. I've been around them, seen them. They're really nice, but uh, you know, I have, I don't, I don't have a ton of experience with scopes. We used them in the shop here and there, the big, the old machines. Um, a lot of guys don't embrace the scope as far as. Uh, need it in today's technology and i kind of i disagree with that i think we we all need to start using the scopes more um so anyway i've got like i said i got one of my vans i've used occasionally here and there uh just to do little things i wanted to get something uh, a little bit had more capability and the hand tech the biggest uh complaint i've seen when i was researching it was the software um a little bit clunky, I guess. It doesn't do as much as, as the Pico scope, obviously. Of course, it's you know quite a bit cheaper. So anyway, I want to do uh, a few videos um, using the hand tech, setting it up, and uh, getting used to it. And we'll just uh, go from there. Learn if you have any suggestions or can do things better with it. Be uh, feel free to comment. Um, like I said, I've only had a week and. Uh, I've only used it a few times, so I have a car, my own personal car, 2003 Mercury Grand Marquis. I'm going to scope the ignition coil and the fuel injector on a video. We'll kind of go through the setup and look at the waveform together um, and just kind of get some of the, you know, I want to uh, put some of these videos out for the hand tech because I haven't seen a whole, a whole bunch of them. Uh, so... You know, knowledge is power, and the more people that get involved with it and uh, use it, I guess it's been discontinued. Uh, I, when I went on uh, Hantech's website, discontinued it. I don't know if they have a different one now. This is the C, and like I said, it comes with eight, you got eight channels on it, and it comes with the uh, carrying case, and it's got the eight. Uh, eight leads for it uh, and what I would say you know they're about two feet long uh, which is not real long when you're working under the hood of a car um, I would say that and the USB cable is not super long either uh, will be the two biggest drawbacks that I see right away with it is you're gonna have to have your uh, hand tech pretty close to your engine or in your engine compartment uh, when, when you know if you're working under the hood uh, of something you know, with the leads that come with it, uh, you're going to have to have your scope and your computer pretty close to the engine, which uh, isn't a huge deal, but, you know, there's fans moving and, and uh, other things going on are there, and you can get interference from other cables and wires and stuff. So I would say the biggest drawback from it, from what I see, like I said, I've only had a week, would be... You're probably going to want to upgrade your leads on it and maybe get a longer USB cable to keep your uh, laptop out from under the hood. The laptop that I have here in the shop is just a shop laptop. It's not very expensive. I think I paid like 150 bucks for it on Craigslist or whatever. Uh, I just use it for, uh, you know, looking at wine diagrams and stuff like that. So I'm not, I wouldn't be too butthurt if it's, something happened to it under the hood. Um, but... If you have a nice laptop or you care, I mean, obviously I don't want to damage this laptop. Don't, you know, 
But anyway, uh, if you have a nicer one, you may want to get a longer cord for it. The USB cord that comes with it is probably only maybe, like I said, maybe two feet. So I guess everything that comes with the kit is about two feet. So uh, those would be the two upgrades that I would probably that I'll probably do. I already actually bought one longer lead for it, um, and then. Uh, you know, I obviously want to get a longer cord for the USB, just so you can get the hand tech and the laptop out of the engine bay. But for the, this video here, we're just gonna uh, do, we're gonna scope ignition coil real quick and uh, go through the software a little bit. Um, which I said, like that, I guess that's the biggest complaint people have about the hand tech scope is the software. Um, so yeah, anyway, I guess we'll. Uh, I'll get started hooking this car up to it, and we'll kind of go through the software. Um, after you get it installed on your laptop, it's pretty easy to install. Uh, you install the Handtech scope first, USB, and then install the software. It's a Chinese company, so they're going to ask you Chinese or English when you install it. And uh, so anyway, if you're not Chinese, you want to pick English, I guess. And uh, it's installed pretty easily. Um, and what little I have used the software, it is a little bit clunky, but I think you can get, you know, it's like anything else. Once you get used to using it, uh, it'll probably be a lot easier, you know. I notice every time I load it up, it wants to turn on all, all eight channels, even though I've turned off the channels before. So I guess it doesn't keep a memory of your previous, uh, you know, your previous settings, which is a little annoying. I mean, I could be wrong on that, because like I said, I haven't used it that much, but... Uh, Anyway, we'll get started on it and uh, hook up to this car and look at the waveform and I'll show you the settings I use to get to that, get to there. And uh, yeah, I think I'll do some more videos on the hand tech and uh, you know, uh, my son's in shop class now. His teacher said, oh, you don't need scopes. Um, that's dumb. That's, uh, that's kind of a, a opinion of a lot of people, or I guess uh, that you don't need a scope, but I think, uh, you know, nowadays there's too many things that uh, the scope can do that your regular voltmeter can't do. And I think if you don't get used to using a scope or don't use a scope, uh, you're going to get left behind eventually. You know, checking your high and low speed data buses, uh, you know, just all the things a scope can do. Um, you know, it's, I don't know how you're going to not be able to, uh, you're going to be stuck doing oil changes and brake jobs the rest of your life if you don't embrace this kind of, and this technology has been around for decades, but, uh, you know, it's making a comeback with all the new, uh, with all the cars being so, uh, computer oriented. So, uh, you know, if you don't embrace that, um, you may end up just being an oil changer or a brake guy the rest of your life. Uh, if, you know, you may want to rethink that and, and just embrace it. It's not that hard to learn. And once you learn it, like I said, the biggest pain of the whole thing is, is getting your laptop out, hooking it up. And But on some of these jobs, uh, you know, if you were going to check your cam and crankshaft correlation, um, how much time does it take to pull off a timing cover and get down to that and turn it over and get it and get it to top dead center and all that? And then you find out, okay, well, it is off. You can do that same thing with a scope and probably five to ten minutes of setup. Versus never even going, you never go into the engine at all. You just hook your leads to your crank and your cam, and you look at the waveforms and, and see if they line up or if they line up the way they're supposed to. And you're, you're avoiding taking off, you know, taking apart an engine. So uh, there's lots of examples like that. Um, and like I said, I'm no scope expert by any means. I'm, I'm just kind of getting into it more. And uh, yeah, I plan on. Uh, going full on with it because uh, I think it's, you know, if you don't keep up with it, uh, you're going to be left behind. So anyway, enough of the rambling and rants. I just want, uh, you know, we're going to try to do some videos on the hand tech as much as possible because there's all kinds of videos about the Pico scope out there, but not a whole lot about the hand tech. So we'll uh, uh, try to change that, put some on the channel, and get people used to using it. All right, so I'm going to go over the settings here. I hope this glare, it looks like it's glaring pretty bad in my screen. I hope it's not uh, like that, picking that up. Anyway, I just want to go over the settings. I got channel 1, which is the yellow lead, and channel 2, which would be on the amp clamp. And channel 1 is going to the fuel injector control wire. You have two wires on this 
uh, grand marquee. It has a power wire and a control wire to the PCM. So I'm, pro I'm probed into the control wire on the PCM, which is channel one. And I got channel one here, and I got set up on a 10 volt scale um, per division. And I got it on a, a, a 20 to one attenuator. So you'll want to switch your, your bottom here on the zoom vertically. If you know, if you're using attenuator, switch to 20 to one, 10 volt scale. So each one of these blocks is 10 volts, uh, you know, on the scale. That's channel one. And I got it uh, two milliseconds. And, you know, I basically have, uh, it's starting here. I have a trigger here. So, uh, channel two, you just press, select the channel you want. Go to channel two. And I got an amp clamp hooked up to that, to the power wire. And right now that's on a one amp uh, per division. And, I, and you select, <clears throat> I got the Handtech C65 uh, and clamp hooked to it. So you would drop this down, collect the C65 and clamp, select that. That's on the two milliseconds. And I'll show you. Uh, so here's the channels on the scope. This is channel one. It's got the attenuator. Then this cable goes to your fuel injector. And then this is where the amp clamp is hooked to. And I'll show you how it's hooked up over there. So that you can do this yourself uh, if you have this equipment. So this is how it's set up. I got the fuel injector. That's going into the white and red. And there's a red. Normally on these fuel injectors, <clears throat> they'll all have one common color. Like this Ford's got all red for the power wires. And then the odd color uh, would be your control wire. So I got it T-pinned into the control wire. And then I have uh, you know your lead coming from the scope on the T-pin, then I have a, and then I had the other side grounded, and then this is the uh, Handtech uh, CC65 amp clamp, it's a low amp clamp, and I got it set on the low amps, and you you zero these out by pressing this, holding this button for a few seconds, and I got that clamped on the, uh, the red power wire, so we're going to be reading the amps coming into the wire, and then we have the control wire hooked up. So we'll go and start the car and take a look at the waveform that it produces with this setup. All right, so the engine is running. This is the waveform we have. I'm going to pause the waveform so I can kind of explain it a little bit better. All right, so it's paused right now. I'm going to shut the car off. All right, so I just shut the car off so I don't gas myself out and. Uh, there's no reason to run the car. We got to get this is a uh, pause view of a good waveform on a fuel injector. And what we have here, this is the uh, battery voltage line we're coming through here. This is where the computer turns the injector on, and it's on. This is the time that it's on. And then when the injector shuts off, you have a big voltage spike that goes up. The energy's got to go somewhere. And then when it comes back down, this is what I kind of want to show you. When it comes back down, see that little hump right there? Uh, you know, it comes down, humps up, and then goes back down. That little hump is when the injector closes. That's the pinnel movement closing. You want to have that. If your injector was stuck open, you wouldn't have that. It would just be a, a smooth slope all the way down right here. And that's about normally where they shut off right there. So that's something you want to look for. You want to look for if you have like a dead miss in your car or you think your injector's staying open or something. Uh, if, there, if that hump is not there, then you, had, you definitely have an injector problem. Um, you can see here, each one of these uh, squares is 2 milliseconds. So this injector is open almost 4 milliseconds, which is pretty normal. And then uh, I got this on a 1 amp scale. And you can see here, it ramps up, and it's right at right at about an amp. So the injector is not pulling a ton of, uh, you know, that's about where an injector should be. And if you see this hump right here, that's actually when the panel starts to move open. So if you look at, you know, you got the panel opening and then the panel closing over here. And this is a pretty good waveform for a, uh, a good, you know, this is a known good fuel injector. You know, this is my car. It runs great. Uh, so anyway, I just kind of made this to show you what a good waveform would look like on a fuel injector. Um, I hope I explained the setup. I know that's kind of like what people gloss over the most on these videos is the setup of the actual scope software. Like I said, I'm still learning this uh, software. I've only had this hand tech about uh, a week. So it actually took me 
longer to set this up <laughs> than it did to actually just do the test. Uh, and if you, like I said before, if you have any uh, insight or comments or anything, be sure to leave them below because I, I don't would love to hear uh, your experience with the hand tech and the software. And if you have any ideas for future videos, uh, I'm going to try to use the hand tech as much as possible. I'll probably do a ignition coil uh, waveform next and how to set it up on the hand tech. But uh, for today, we're just going to do this fuel injector. And uh, yeah, I don't know what else to say uh, other than we will. I will try to put some more videos up on using the scope. Uh, and here's a bigger picture of it. And as you can see, like this is like I was saying earlier, um, cable's not super long. So my laptop's actually on the on the uh, radiator shroud here on the car or on the header bar. So it's not the greatest uh, to have it that close to the engine. And then, you know, when you're running your leads, uh, try to keep your leads away from any spark plug wires or any other kind of wires that may interfere. Um, there is a way to uh, zero this scope out and calibrate it. I, I should... Maybe I'll make a video on that. Uh, it's pretty simple, real easy, uh, just to calibrate it. And I guess that's about it. Uh, they ha Handtech has these. This is the low. Uh, this is the low amp clamp, and then they have a high amp clamp. Um, so these are these are these are I guess around 60, 60 bucks or so. They're pretty reasonable, and you know it's made by Handtech. And the Handtech software actually has uh, where you can pick it um, those two particular ant clamps. So that's kind of like I said, it's a good investment if you uh, want to check things like that. So yeah, that's it. That's a uh, good waveform for a fuel injector, and. Uh, you know, subscribe and uh, follow along on the channel, and we'll have more videos for, with the uh, hand tech in use. Thanks, and have a great day. So I just wanted to add also, I don't know if I covered that earlier in the video, it also comes with an inductive clamp, uh, the hand tech does, uh, for hooking up to spark plug wires or whatever. Uh, and then, um, this was, I got this, I picked this up pretty cheap on uh, Amazon, it's Tool Ace 20 piece back pro kit. And, I mean, it's not the super high quality, but it'll get you through. And it has quite a few back probes, you know, different angles. Um, and then it's got uh, some alligator leads and stuff. So that's that's something worth picking up if you do pick up, because you're going to have to be able to probe wires and stuff. Um, of course, you can always get the wire piercers. And these are the two hand clamps. Like I said, this is the uh, CC65, this is the low amp, and this is, you know, obviously a little bit higher amp, uh, the CC650 current clamp. So, anyway, that's just something to keep in mind. And then, uh, I will say, like I said before, the leads that they come with um, in the kit are pretty cheap. I actually already broke an alligator clip on one already. So you're not going to get uh, high quality leads. So uh, a good investment would be to get you know some high quality BNC leads to the clamp, to the uh, scope. Um, but like I said, this will get you started. And like I said, it comes with this case. So anyway, that's just I wanted to kind of cover that a little bit uh, in case you're starting out. And uh, anyway, uh, thanks for watching the video, and please subscribe and check back often. Thanks.